You're going to get me wet again, aren't you? <laughs> Well, as usual, Lorraine's got us lying flat on our faces in an ephemeral tarn. At least this time it's drier. What are we looking for, Lorraine? <laughs> well, Paul, what you're lying in right now is what we might call a hot spot of biodiversity. Mm. It's very exciting. Mm. <laughs> now, you called it an ephemeral tarn, but it's also known as a kettle hole. Sure. And I think this morning in the audio conference I explained how kettle hole is formed. Yep. When, you know, millions of years ago there were these big, huge glaciers that travelled across this landscape and as they melted they left these big blocks of ice and those blocks of ice melted to leave these depressions. Mm. Um, so that's, that's now what we call a kettle hole. Yep. And I'll just explain ephemeral tarn as well because it's a bit of a funny term. Mm. Um, the word ephemeral means something that comes and goes or is not always there. So in this case it's referring to the water yep. that, that comes and goes over the year. And the word tarn um, refers to something that's, that's filled with water. So um, another, another name for this is a turf. Um, and the word turf means like a mat of low-growing, uh, closely spaced plants yep. all, all growing amongst each other. Sure. And uh, most of the plants are tiny, like less than three centimetres. And mm -hmm. in this particular kettle hole turf and uh, there's a whole variety of little plants that are you know tiny versions of bigger things that we see commonly sure. around so things like tiny little ferns and grasses uh, little little flowers and little bulbs and mini bitty bitties and rushes right. and um, even tiny mosses and carnivorous plants wow yeah so a huge a huge diversity and um, the thing that makes these plants special is because they can all survive in this environment where they get completely covered over with water in the winter right? and then go all dry in the summer. And they're well adapted to that? They are, yeah. Some people have named these type of plants that grow in this environment knife, fork and spoon plants. Uh -huh. <laughs> because for some reason most of their, the leaves of these plants seem to be either shaped like a knife or a fork or a spoon. Right. And uh, one of the ways they seem to adapt to being covered in water for half the year is to grow different shaped leaves in the water than what they grow in the air. So some one plant might grow a leaf like a fork in the water and then once it's dry it might grow leaves that are shaped like a knife. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because a knife would have a bigger surface area to absorb the light to, to do its photosynthesizing. Yeah, that's right, and it can also grow out longer to try and trap more of the sunlight sure. yeah, and get above the water. Great. And uh, so another way that these plants have adapted to being covered with water half the year is that they, um, they reproduce really quickly when they get the chance when it's dry. So all of a sudden all these little flowers will pop up and then quickly set seed and then are gone before you know it. Yes, because the ones further up just aren't flowering anymore. No, and there's a gra finished. gradation down here where quite a lot of them are flowering. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Fascinating. Same species. Yeah. Different flowering times. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And this type of ecosystem um, is very rare. And the plants that grow in it are also rare. And so it's really important that we look after these kettle holes. And that means not riding your motorbike or your bike through them and not letting animals walk all over them and damage sure. them with their hooves. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So we really need to look after places like this. Yep, definitely worth preserving. <laughs>